Hi, my name is Jeff, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to view our video on smart radio traffic prioritization. So, traffic prioritization, there's a group of features we have in Mesh Rider that allow us, through a differentiated services protocol, to enable traffic prioritization for our data. Um, so let's define differentiated services a little bit first uh, to start. So differentiated services code point, or DSCP, is a means of classifying and managing your network traffic to provide quality of service at the layer three level. Um, what it does, it uses a six bit field called differentiated services field in the IP header to prioritize the packet into a predefined uh, quality of service queue. This is again done at layer three. So what, what I'll do now is let's, let's navigate to this area in the GUI where, our, where these features are available. Then we'll kind of break down each of these um, options and features and how, how it can be configured. So let's log into the radio and navigate to it. Okay, we get there by going to network configuration and traffic prioritization. So now we're at the differentiated services option menu here. Um, there are various settings. The first one we'll talk about is enable differentiated services. As we see here, it's enabled by default. Um, and this allows us to basically do uh, the inspection at, at a layer three. Let's go ahead and run through a little more detail of exactly what uh, the Enable Differentiated Services feature is. So what it does, it basically, uh, and it's enabled by default as you, as you saw. Uh, consider this, a link is layer two, operates at layer two, but differentiated services we have to understand is a firewall rule. Um, it operates at layer three, so once we enable it, we basically enable the firewall to allow us to inspect the IP header in that six-bit uh, field at the layer three level. This allows us to enable the mapping of that particular traffic by uh, by different by protocol or by port into a specific queue that we've predefined to prioritize it. In the smart radio, we've got four such queues available to us. We've got voice, which is CS6, video, CS5, best effort, and then background, which is CS1. So in order, as we have them, the number one queue priority is voice queue, which optimizes for latency. And it also happens to be the queue we put our command and control, our command and control traffic as well. The second queue in priority is video, which, which would be optimized for throughput. The third is best effort, which is not optimized. And the fourth uh, is background, uh, which is, for basically, is basically for low priority data. Okay, so let's go back to our, our, our GUI and take a look at one uh, type of traffic we, we would want to prioritize, and that would be command and control. So if we look, one of the next settings we have uh, is our optimized command and control and, and voice for URLLC. And we'll, we'll define exactly what this is and um, what role this plays in prior, and how we can prioritize uh, either voice or in command and control. In our case, it'll be for command and control. In, in, in our in our particular uh, uh, device, or in this case, a drone. So let's go back and define that better. So if we look at what that means, so we have a specific feature in Mesh Rider known as URLLC, which is Ultra Reliable Low Latency Command and Control. And what we have here, what we saw was it was enabled, and we have an optimized command and control and voice for URLLC feature which we can, it has two effects uh, on, on the traffic. And it changes the radio settings inside the device to ensure lowest latency, which is typically two to 10 milliseconds once this is enabled. And it all, but what you need to do is you need to set up a DSCP classification rule to identify the traffic and have that traffic sent to the voice CS6 quality of service queue, which is our command and control queue. And it will then give the highest priority to this particular traffic. And the example we'll show here will we'll walk us through exactly uh, how to set this up and, and what the results would be. So in, in our case, our CNC application uses port 5000 and it sends traffic over UDP. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to basically, um, we'll click add, we'll set the protocol to UDP, we'll set the port to 5000, 
Uh, we'll set DSCP value to CS6, and then we'll save and apply. So let's go ahead and navigate to the GUI and walk, walk us through those steps. So again, we've already enabled uh, the command and control, which has in, built into it some enhanced radio settings that by default, once the once that traffic is set into the queue, will have the advantages of those additional uh, settings for, for, for latency, uh, low latency. But what we need to do is get that traffic sent there. So to do that, to map it, we want to, we, we have already got two classification rules in place. Uh, these are for some serial data that we're having sent over. Uh, so to we'll add, a, like we said, we will add a rule, create a third rule for our command and control. And we'll go ahead and um, protocol is UDP as we said, and the port is 5,000. And now we'll see here, we have, as we said, we have four ports, we have four different queues available to us in, in the radio. We've got uh, port one, which is voice command and control, CS6, where, where this will go. We also mentioned we have the other three, video, best effort, and background. But what we'll do, again, we're going to set our command and control, which will go into the voice queue as well, into CS6, and we can put a comment, we don't have to, uh, this is just say C and C, and we'll save and apply. Once we confirm that this is, ta is taken, Okay, this has now uh, been confirmed, and now we have the third rule here for our CNC traffic coming over port 5000, that it will be prioritized into the highest queue. So again, we'll, again that will minimize latency and ensure the delivery of these packets in priority. Okay, additional feature I want to talk about uh, is diversity rates only, but I do want to just mention the optimized video streaming uh, and, and the video link threshold. These will be uh, available to us in a future version of firmware, which we'll talk about at that point in time. But what I do want to go through here today is the diversity rates only setting. Since our application is a mobile application, in this case a drone deployment, we will enable diversity rates. Then we'll go ahead and explain exactly what the advantages are and why we would utilize diversity rates only in a mobile environment such as this. Before we do that though, let's go ahead and make sure we save and apply. Okay, now, so now let's, let's explain why Diversity rates only is significant. Enabling this is significant in a mobile application, specifically. Uh, as, we, as we notice, it's off by default, but we turned it on. And when enabled, the radio operates at modulation rates MCS0 to MCS7, which are single data stream, which is a single data stream situation. The radio basically sends the same data stream over both antenna ports for redundancy, uh, which provides more resilient, more stable, a more smoother performance from our video perspective in a very dynamically changing environment such as drone communications or other mobile devices. And let's think about why that is. So when you have redundant streams at both antenna 1 and antenna 2 on your vehicle, as the vehicle articulates, changes orientation uh, to its neighbor or to its ground station, one of the two antennas will inevitably be blocked uh, line of sight potentially to the, to the neighbor node. And in that case, since you have redundant streams at antenna 1 and antenna 2, uh, with antenna 2 having the, the data present with antenna 1 being blocked, this is a seamless transition and there's no loss of data flow. Uh, however, if this was in a, in a dual stream MIMO configuration, the standard configuration, uh, where you have two unique data streams, one at antenna 1 and antenna 2, if antenna 1 is blocked, the radios will do retries, perform retries, and lower modulation rates until it can reestablish both data stream one and data stream two. You'll see drop packets uh, as a result of this, and you'll see basic link instability, and especially in video, uh, it'll be very noticeable uh, in the quality of the video. 
so it, it's a worthy it, it's a it's a worthy implementation to enable uh, the diversity rates. Now, for that for this particular mobile application, an additional advantage here is that you increase your fade margin when having uh, redundant streams uh, by 3 dB. And the 3 dB improvement, you can think of that as, as if you had twice the transmit power of your radio. Uh, that would be equivalent of a 3 dB improvement in, pro in fade margin, so or process gain. So there's no free lunch, however. As we said, the radios will operate at MCS0 to MCS7 in single stream mode. The trade-off is you'll reduce your data throughput Excuse me. You'll reduce your your, your uh, yes your data throughput by fifty percent uh, as compared to dual stream IMO, which has two unique data streams. So there's a trade off here, but for mobile applications, it's a worthy one to in ensure the the performance of your application and, and the resiliency of the network. Uh, so diversity rates would be uh, the the choice to make in, in a mobily dynamically changing environment. And I'd like to thank you again for watching our video. On traffic prioritization, thanks again.